Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wokeness gone wild. The CDC releasing new guidance appearing to encourage men identifying as the opposite sex to breastfeed. Published right now on their website, quote, transgender and non-binary gendered individuals may give birth and breastfeed or feed at the chest. Then there's this. Portland is now telling city employees to avoid mentioning the term pregnant women to be more culturally conscious. And on college campuses, the University of Cincinnati deciding to take back its punishment on one of its professors who failed a student for using the term biological women in an essay. This is what the professor told the student after giving her a zero on the paper. I was told that I was contributing to turf ideology, which should be the only version of feminism. And then I was told that sex is not defined at birth and it's not like a science thing. The school is removing its reprimand from the professor's file, saying it was issued in error. So how far will this all go? Across the pond in the United Kingdom, it is now considered child abuse if parents don't pay for their kids' gender transition surgery or refuse to call their children by their preferred pronouns. That means family members could be prosecuted under the law. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8-11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is $Watchman1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. We're going to begin with a sudden burst of very bad weather here in the Northeast. A whole summer's worth of rain dropped in just a few hours. That's so fun, wiping out the roads here in New York City. It was bad. Millions from Pennsylvania to New Hampshire were left in the path of dangerous flooding. Officials said a young woman was killed by the flooding north of New York City, and there are others who are still unaccounted for at this hour. Oh, my God. Floodwaters rushed through the streets of Highland Falls, New York, Sunday after torrential downpours dumped at least eight inches of rain in the area. <laughs> Neighborhood blocks turning into rivers. Further south, flooding left these rows of cars in Stony Point partially submerged. First responders rescuing dozens of people by boat. Similar scenes played out across the northeast. Roads and bridges buckling under the weight of water in Norfolk, Connecticut. Outside Philadelphia, this driver was rescued after being stranded on a washed-out road. 
Back in upstate New York, rail lines weren't spared either. Water, mud and fallen trees have left train tracks either submerged or impassable, disrupting hundreds of thousands of commuters trek into New York City this morning. Overnight, a string of dangerous thunderstorms slamming the northeast. Washing away cars and collapsing roads. That's insane. 27 million people now under flood alerts across the Northeast, from eastern New York to New Hampshire. A lot of traffic, a lot of water. Oh my gosh. Torrential downpours leaving drivers stranded, like this apocalyptic scene in Orange County, New York, which is now under a state of emergency. We advise Main Street and the traffic circles completely underwater. We got a car going down the, the river. Rain totals there reaching nearly eight inches, creating hazardous sinkholes in the road. As the sweeping storms turned catastrophic, officials say one woman was killed trying to evacuate her home. The National Weather Service in New York urging residents to avoid the roads, warning stay away or be swept away. Drivers dealing with swamped roads throughout the region. In Pennsylvania, nearly 10 inches of water left vehicles submerged. Bro, I just watched my car just swim away. While parts of Connecticut were hammered by about five inches of rain in just over an hour. And it comes as Americans in the South and West are dealing with the extreme heat that's been baking the region. And Southwest temps are expected to stay between 105 to 120 degrees this week, including in some parts of California where another disaster struck in Los Angeles County, a massive landslide causing evacuations of homes in Rolling Hills estates. While back east, residents look for rescues as a deluge of devastating weather wreaks havoc on the region. A horrific landslide has been caught on camera in Nagaland and has led to casualties as well. This monsoon season, be careful if you're around the mountains which are prone to landslides as well. Take a look at this visual. Boulders fell on cars on the national highway. The vehicle you see in black, the boulder hits it, then hits the white vehicle next to it, crushing the cars on its path. The landslide was caught on the camera by the individual in the, in the vehicle that was behind. Uh, we are being told that it has uh, led to the loss of life as well. Two people have died because of this. Romans 13:11, And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The closer we draw to the second coming of Christ, the more urgent it is that we awake out of spiritual sleep. We have entered the end times, and with it, the grand climax of human civilization, culminating in the return of Jesus Christ. If ever there was a time to pay attention and get prepared, it is now. Furthermore, none of us knows when he or she will die. Being spiritually prepared for the end of life should be our top priority. Jesus emphasized the importance of watching for his return as we read in Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Watching means properly using our mind. God gave us the ability to study, learn, observe, analyze, judge and think. It is our God-ordained responsibility to watch and pray for Jesus' return. Ignorance comes from ignoring, and God does not want us to be ignorant to the season of the Lord's return, as we read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-11. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. We need to know the Bible prophecies of the end time, especially the prophecies surrounding the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Jesus was emphatic that his followers should hope for his return, expect his return, and pray for his return.
While India's monsoon season has brought relief from soaring summer temperatures, millions of residents have been forced to trade one extreme for another. Meteorologists have issued a red alert to various states across northern India. New Delhi alone experienced over 150 millimetres of rain in 24 hours, one of its highest readings in decades. Parking garages became swimming pools with cars and bikes almost completely submerged. Others were crushed by collapsed walls. The relentless downpour too much for some structures. The Indian Meteorological Department says the amount of rainfall in 12 hours on Saturday was 15% of the total monsoon rain. The record of the last 20 years has been broken. Further north, in the state of Himachal Pradesh, villages were stranded as flash floods brought down a bridge and swept away homes. Others were cut off as landslides wiped out trees and roads. This year, the area has experienced 70% more rainfall than average. It was even higher in the state of Punjab, where rescue crews scrambled to help dozens forced to higher ground by multiple overflowing rivers. Authorities have shut down schools and urged residents in some states to remain indoors in an effort to reduce the danger. But with these conditions expected to continue across so many densely populated areas in the coming days, danger remains inevitable. Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus tells us in verse 37, when our days parallel the days of Noah, he is returning. One of the things that parallel our days with the days of Noah is the unprecedented flooding the world has been experiencing over the last few years. Jesus goes on to tell us in verses 38 and 39 that when he returns, things will be going on as normal, as people will be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. I believe that time has arrived. Luke 17, 26 through 30. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Just in the days of Noah, when God sent a flood, and in the days of Lot, when God sent fire and brimstone to judge mankind, he is about to send his final judgments on a wicked and unrepentant world. Since the start of the weekend, heavy rainfall has lashed regions of southwest Japan, causing floods and triggering mudslides. Over two million people living across Fukuoka, Hiroshima and Oita prefectures have been urged to evacuate as Japan's meteorological agency issued an emergency warning for those regions. These are the heaviest rains ever recorded in the region. The situation is such that lives are at risk and safety must be guaranteed. Some parts of Fukuoka and Kyushu region have submerged under 500 millimetres of rain since Friday, more than the usual rainfall in the entire month of July. Like this house in Karatsu city, hit by a mudslide and washed away into the stream.
Landslides have blocked roads, disrupted train lines and damaged many homes, which are often built on plains at the bottom of hillsides. The government spokesman announced that over 6,700 households were left without power and 80 homes with no water. Japan has seen such weather phenomenon in the past. In 2021, rain triggered a devastating landslide in central resort town of Atami, killing 27 people. But the rain this weekend has been particularly violent. Scientists warn that climate change has intensified the risk of heavy rainfall in Japan and elsewhere, meaning that such disasters are likely to occur again in the future. In Pakistan, the number of people killed so far during the monsoon rain season has risen to 76. Most fatalities are in the northwest province of Punjab. Torrential downpours triggered flooding and landslides over the past two weeks. Kamal Haider for, is there for us in the uh, Punjabi provincial capital of Lahore. And of course, the rain made it, might have stopped Kamal, but that doesn't mean the crisis is over. Absolutely. Flood warnings are still in place. As you mentioned, those casualties. Uh, but the flood warning is very much in place because this city was pounded by heavy rain in 10 hours. It received almost six months of rain in just 10 hours. The situation indeed quite tense because of the effects of climate change. To the alarming streak of record-shattering heat, the Earth's temperature reaching an all-time high four days in a row. The average global temperature hitting its highest level ever recorded, with today possibly marking a new record for a fifth straight day. Extreme heat across the U.S. from California to Florida to New York. Ambulances responding to people overcome by the brutal conditions, which are expected to continue into next week. After four straight days of record temperatures, the world enduring its hottest week ever. And tonight, experts are sounding the alarm. Heat waves are incredibly dangerous. They don't show the outward signs like tornadoes, floods, or hurricanes. So it's important to prioritize your health and take proactive steps during extreme heat. And it's record heat from West Palm Beach, Florida, to Caribou, Maine, to Arizona, where they've recorded over 110 degrees for seven straight days. As the risk for heat illness surges, all of us are going to be at risk, especially as we get even hotter next week. The state of Florida, known for heat and humidity, now facing its hottest year. Some cities feeling close to 110 degrees. And here in Florida, along with the extreme heat, stifling humidity, which has also been well above average, the peak daily heat index has reached 100 or higher for 25 days straight. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world, and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of his complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, Last days, signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all the true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes extreme heat, as we read in Revelation 16, 8, and 9. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Temperatures have been soaring past 47 degrees in many parts of Niger for days. Granaries are bare, and cattle are dying in Agadez. Livestock breeders are trying to sell off their herds to avoid further losses. We don't comprehend this heat. It hurts people and animals. Sometimes we bring cows to sell them at the market, and because of the heat, the livestock can't stand up. They get sick from the heat. The extreme heat is slowing down business in the city. The heat is very high. I implore God to protect us. This year's heat has made us suffer. There are many power cuts. The heat this year is terrible. The UN estimates almost 20% of Niger's population will need humanitarian assistance to get through the year. The government's released just over $450 million to support farmers hit by poor harvests. But it's only the beginning of what's known as the lean season. In the Agadez area, which is a desert zone, the temperature rise is exceptional, often reaching 45 degrees. This is unbearable for biodiversity in general, like the plants and animals. For now, there's little they can do, with temperatures expected to remain high over the next two months. The world is baffled at the events taking place in the weather, and yet it was foretold 2,000 years ago in Bible prophecy that this would happen. 
Satan, the great deceiver, often tries to front-run God by giving people wrong ideas ahead of time about what is prophesied to happen. Satan has tricked mankind into believing that climate change is real and in turn has blinded many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. Don't let Satan blind you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The extreme weather the world has been witnessing is not climate change. It is God letting us know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is returning. Now to the first locally acquired case of malaria in the U.S. in 20 years. Florida health officials reported two more cases on Thursday, bringing the total number in the state to six. Officials are warning people to be aware, but not to panic. CBS's Omar Villafranca reports from Texas, where another case of the mosquito-borne illness was recently found. Mosquito spraying trucks in Florida are ready to fight the bite after two more cases of malaria were reported in Sarasota County. The new cases bring the total to six in Florida and one in South Texas so far this year. Pest control companies like Mosquito Shield are staying busy this summer in Texas, battling the bugs with sprays and killing larvae with granules. They're definitely bad everywhere, but um, the mosquitoes with the humidity and the high temperatures, they're definitely out and about. They carry a lot of diseases like the Zika virus, uh, malaria, encephalitis, and it doesn't only affect humans, it affects animals. Blair DeFore has his property sprayed every year to protect his family. When the grandkids come over too, it's nice to know I'm providing a safe environment. The CDC issued an alert to doctors to keep an eye out for new cases. Testing for malaria is not common, but the CDC says medical professionals can easily identify the illness if they do a blood test. And be aware of symptoms like headache, fever, and muscle aches. More severe symptoms can include mental health changes or lung and kidney failure. Doctors urge people to take the disease seriously. Severe malaria can be deadly and it is a medical emergency. So people who have signs and symptoms of malaria should get checked out as quickly as possible. A Chinese spy station in Cuba is now setting off alarm bells. Less than 100 miles off the coast of the United States, this base is being developed into a military training facility. And the Chinese are not only shoring up the military on the island, they're also propping up the Cuban economy, all of which should be a huge wake-up call for the U.S. Dale Hurd reports. This is the Chinese Signals Intelligence Facility at Bejucal, Cuba just 90 miles from the U.S. mainland. It allows China to monitor U.S. military communications throughout the southern United States. When its existence was first Everyone reported last here. month, the Pentagon denied it. We are not aware of China and Cuba uh, developing any type of spy station. Later, National Security Council spokesman John Kirby evaded, but admitted the base exists. We're, uh, we're not going to be able to get into too much detail about our own counterintelligence uh, efforts. And we now know that the spy station isn't new. A former intelligence official told the Miami Herald it's been there since the 1990s and the U.S. government has known about it. Now there are reports the Chinese plan to expand the spy base into a military training facility. What form it will take is unclear, but consider this base China built on Mischief Reef in the South China Sea. It includes a landing strip, hangars, and a listening post. Cuba is a much easier place to install a military base. But this is about more than just a military base. China is helping keep a desperate Cuban government afloat. With Cuba facing its biggest economic and political crisis in decades, China has thrown it a lifeline, giving it millions in cash and restructuring its debt. This is the playbook China has used throughout Latin America to replace the U.S. as the leading trading partner in the region and make nations dependent upon it. China in the past was careful not to provoke the United States by basing troops in Latin America. 
But with the planned base in Cuba, Ellis says that may be changing. So this is crossing a threshold, um, and clearly the fact that they've chosen to cross the threshold at a time when tensions are increasing over Taiwan and other issues you know, indicates that there's a willingness to take risks. They're not as worried as they used to be about uh, provoking the United States. In October 1962, the installation of Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba brought the world to the brink of nuclear war. The U.S. government stood up to the Soviets and the missiles were removed. But with the Biden administration seeking better relations with the Chinese government, there would seem to be little chance the White House will stand up to this. ISIS leader killed in a drone strike in Syria. The deadly attack was carried out on Friday. U.S. officials say those same drones were harassed for about two hours by Russian aircraft on the same day, the third such incident that week. Here's ABC's Mary Alice Parks. Tonight, the Department of Defense says a drone strike on Friday near Aleppo, Syria, has killed known ISIS leader Usama al muhajid who a Defense Department official said was riding a motorcycle at the time. The head of the U.S. Central Command writing, this will disrupt and degrade ISIS's ability to plan and conduct terror attacks. The Pentagon says the strike was conducted by MQ-9 Reaper drones, the very same drones that earlier in the day were harassed by Russian planes, a new and growing problem in the region. For three straight days this week, Russian planes flying dangerously close to U.S. unmanned aircraft over Syria. The Pentagon releasing these rare videos showing Russian planes deploying parachute flares in the flight path of an American drone, forcing the drone over Syria to engage in evasive maneuvers. The next day, a Russian pilot seen here flying just above a U.S. drone and scattering the sky with more flares. The U.S. typically uses a deconfliction hotline to let the Russians know when they'll be operating in this area of northwest Syria, which is part of what makes this behavior towards the drones so concerning, since in theory, the Russians were given a heads up that they would be there. Luke 12, 54 through 56. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Are you discerning the times? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, 
you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.